uh, right. Uh, <clears throat> so we are here today and uh, making this video for our viewers, our audience in India, outside India, wherever they watch us. And uh, I'm very glad that we have you today in our studio. Thank you. Where uh, our audience will know a lot about an entire state, Odisha in India, as well as a lot about India through your works, through your writings and uh, as your CV tells me you have been working very hard and you have produced different kinds of writings. We will talk about all these things. So first uh, I would like you to introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah. Tell yourself about more about yourself. Vasudev Sunani where Vasudev Sunani comes from and uh, how did Vasudev Sunani grew up and how he aspired to be a writer, a scientist, yeah? Yeah, uh, my name is Vasudev Sunani. My father's name is Guruvaru Sunani. My mother's name is uh, Jaipula Sunani. Of course, they are no more right now in this world. And uh, my village is uh, Manigura, which is coming under Noapada districts. And uh, in my, you know, uh, our, uh, we, we are ten brothers and sisters. Okay. Three, yeah, three, uh -huh. three brothers and seven sisters. Okay. And uh, uh, among the brothers, I am the middle one. Right, right. That is why my family member, they uh, call me Majia Majia because I am the middle one. Okay. Middle one. Right, right. Politically, we say the middle one is Majia. Yeah. So my family member usually ask me instead of Vasudev, Majia Majia. Majia. Okay. Majia. We in Majla. North India, we call Majla or yeah, 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 middle, yeah. you know. And in psychology, we also say uh -huh. that the person who is in between uh -huh. yeah. aspires more and struggles more to <laughs> get identity yes. because either the elder one gets or the yeah. younger one gets. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a different idea, you know, <coughs> altogether. Yeah. So uh, actually, when I was a small child, there was uh, heavy poverty, you know, in our area. Mm -hmm always mm -hmm. and uh, if I say uh, the history of this poverty or the scenario of the poverty you know mm -hmm. around 70 uh, percent people they do not eat in my place okay during that period right right so in that scenario we had a small um, primary school in my place mm -hmm. and there I uh, studied up to fifth mm -hmm. Then uh, for 6th and 7th, you know, um, I have to walk down daily around uh, 3.5 kilometers. Okay. In the morning, I go with a bare foot, with a jola, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. baggage, bags, mm -hmm. uh, my bastani. Right. And uh, without any, you know, uh, food or any kind of snacks in the uh, lunch time, okay. I spend there. and. Uh, after the school, uh, school is being closed after, uh -huh. in the afternoon, uh -huh. maybe at uh, 4 o'clock, then I again come back to my house uh, uh -huh. uh, through walking in a bare uh, food uh -huh. and then then I take my uh, pakhal. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, pakhal means uh, uh, the uh, rice which is being oh, added yes. with boiled rice added with uh, water. Okay. Right, right. water. Uh -huh. And then I used to go to outside and in the evening I used to sleep and this was the you know, um, yeah. general day to day life in the right, right. Um, mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what happened after uh, after my seventh standard is uh, completed. Mm -hmm. May I just you see uh, yeah. um, for example uh, you told us about uh, the name of the district. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I we mean, locate it geographically, yeah. uh, is it in the north of Odisha yeah. or south or west or east? Yeah. Actually, it is uh, in western part of the western part. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Western part of uh, means uh, towards, the sea, towards the sea. No, 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 no. opposite. Towards Actually, is yeah. Huh? Yeah. Towards yeah. Yeah. Geographically, okay. you can divide Odisha into two parts. Uh -huh. uh, 
one part is coastal area. Okay. Coastal that is east. And that is east. East. Okay. And coastal the forest area. and the forest part and the most on uh, I mean on irrigated and uh -huh. forest part is the western part. Okay, western part. Yeah. Sorry. So oh. I belong to this Nuapada, okay. Kalandi, Balandi, so Gorakhpur. Right, these right. are uh, uh, in the this west. This is the cluster of these uh, districts there, yeah. 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 which have been otherwise uh, in media for Kalahandi, uh, yes. yeah. for yeah. infamous reasons. Yes. 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 Not only poverty, but you see acute crisis of food and all. Yes, sure. In fact, during the time of Rajiv Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I take the opportunity of introducing Saroj. Saroj teaches English in Jamia Media Islamia and has worked on Basudev Sunani's writings for his PhD, and he takes keen interest in. Dalit writings and uh, Dalit history and Dalit historiography. So uh, we will continue talking about this. And uh, so, uh, uh, is there any river or mountain, etc., in this part of? Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. A small, small river is there. Small that river. Is, uh, the Goraghat river is there. Okay. See, if I uh, remind you uh, during my school career now. Uh -huh. So since uh, high school was not located near my my place, uh -huh. so what SCST welfare school was there, which is located around 60 kilometers away from my place. Okay. So it was mainly made for SCST. Only made for SCST uh, students. Uh -huh. So what we were doing is that in the morning actually we were going with a, some uh, bus. Uh, usually one bus was flying. Mm -hmm. And we get down in a some point and then we walk down for 30 kilometers. Oh, 30 kilometers? Yeah, 30 kilometers in a day. Uh -huh. So around if you walk, um, get down from bus at uh, 8 o'clock, uh -huh. means uh, around uh, 8 o'clock or uh, uh, maybe 8 or 7 or 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening you, you reach this school. Oh. So you have to, you know, uh, 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 walk down for 30 kilometers crossing two, three rivers, yeah, small yeah. rivers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, using this boat and all okay. that. Okay, so in, uh, in one sense it was uh, uh, a pain uh, because uh, one has to actually walk a long way to reach school, to get to become modern, but at the same time uh, the stretch and the whole uh, space that you cross every day and no. so before the school arrives a lot of schooling took place. Mm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in one sense. I mean, which was which was not under anyone's control. Yeah, yeah. But today, at least, we can see it yeah. that uh, that that reaching a school uh, and uh, the environment, you know, uh, if it is spacious and if it contains different kinds of things, then learning at one level starts in a very different uh, manner. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> so, uh, Vasudev ji. Um, that was a little bit about your school education and uh, <coughs> uh, you stayed in uh, a school which was mainly uh, for the SCST students and it had a boarding and, uh, where you stayed. Uh, do you think that uh, this kind of model of schooling where uh, students from particular castes were there and uh, was it a holistic development or do you think it should have it should, it should have been a different kind of uh, schooling see during that period really if that that uh, that provision would not have been there mm -hmm. perhaps i would not have been here perhaps okay therefore i think uh, actually uh, the provision should be there but then the way uh, I, I was uh, you know, spending my time, um, the schooling, the way of uh, schooling during that period, the uh, teaching standard and minimum you know, um, support, uh, whatever the uh, students are being provided uh, by the government was very poor, definitely very, very poor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my uh, uh, friends, and uh, personally, me was suffering from a lot of you know, uh, uh, night blindness. I mean, uh, due to scarcity of this uh, vitamin A, okay. vitamin A, uh -huh. and uh, 
most often everybody, all the students will be having some scabby, scabby, scabby uh -huh. kind of thing. Okay. So the, the, uh -huh. the, the way the people were actually, the students were spending their life uh, in uh -huh. an unsanitary condition, unhygienic condition, uh -huh. that was not uh, sufficient. I mean, um, there was no uh, good, you know, uh, uh -huh. habitation oh, okay. for the, for the okay. students. Right, right. Since they were, you know, sleeping yeah. in the uh, uh, floor and uh, taking water uh, from the you know uh, yeah, this uh, nearby ponds uh, pond oh, water okay. and uh, most of the pond water was like you know uh, the color was uh, like a tea oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, water. Very, very very polluted very polluted the hard water yeah, 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 yeah. but then but then during that period we we, we had no consciousness about this Mm -hmm. Perhaps we are thinking this is the only provision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. what you told ki actually so much pain. Yeah, you are walking down 30 kilometers. So during that period, uh, I was not thinking that there is a pain. Uh -huh. But then when I remember yeah, that is a part. Right? Uh -huh. When I remember today, uh -huh. he, um, am I the same person who was walking down seven, uh, seven, yeah, 30 yeah. kilometers? Yeah. So uh, it gives a lot of pain. Right. Yeah. So that was the situation. But then, there, but then um, uh, the students, uh, those who are actually not getting uh, a, a full belly of you know, food uh -huh. and a small pants are to wear. Uh, so in that situation, you know, that kind of uh, provision is highly essential. Mm -hmm. then much more support is required uh, to strengthen the students right. uh, and uh, uh, to, to provide Don't you really think one, uh, this aspect of pain for example, uh, for uh, this aspect of pain, yeah. uh, don't you think that uh, pain is a very relative kind of thing and in a caste society, the idea of pain is very different from uh, caste to caste and uh, uh, normally uh, lower caste people are uh, given a belief that pain is not a pain and whereas uh, upper caste people you know, they complain too much about uh, if they have to walk for 30 kilometers or if they have to live in the conditions where scabies and other kinds of things happen. So isn't, isn't it that uh, uh, not complaining against pain is also a kind of sim symptom of caste system in which lower caste are made to believe that pain is something part of their life. That is what I am saying. Yeah. Exactly uh, during that period why I was not feeling pain. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I don't have any you know, mindset or uh, uh -huh. uh, logic yeah. uh, to differentiate between this pain and the pleasure. Yeah, yeah. It was not in my mind. Yeah. What yeah. is poverty? Supposing a, a upper caste people are actually taking good uh, amount of uh, no, full belly of uh, food yeah. and I am uh, suffering from poverty. Yeah. So the society has given such kind of understanding to us that, yeah, you start. So yeah. we were thinking, ki, no, this is our destiny, this is yeah, our destiny, yes, yeah. 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 it is natural to us, okay. we cannot be, uh, uh -huh. go beyond that. Uh -huh. So this, uh, this, this is the well structured you know, concept, yeah. it was given by the so called upper caste people, therefore the, the, the lower caste people or the so called uh, uh, people having poverty, they were not able to think of uh -huh. that actually this is a pain or they uh -huh. have pleasure. Right, right, right. So, so, so when uh, someone become conscious, someone become educated, someone yeah. become create uh, some yeah. kind of logic, no? Yeah. Someone uh, compare yeah. uh, that the society is meant for everybody. Yeah. Uh, this uh, this water, this yeah. air, this soil is yeah. for everybody, and everybody goes to have, Everybody has uh, their equal yeah. rights. Yeah. Yeah. If someone thinks in that sense, yeah. Yeah. so definitely one can. Yeah, and then, the pain and then yeah. The pain. then one also comes to know the source of pain. Yeah. For example if pain is caused by discrimination yeah. and by torture yeah. which is one kind of pain then other pain can be uh, let us say pain during uh, you know uh, say your teeth uh, have some problem mm -hmm. and you have pain physical pain or if you uh, have some women during labor hours yeah. you know and during delivery have pain so pain uh, is part of uh, are biology uh, in many ways, but another pain is sociological. Yeah. So sociological pain uh, is uh, very traumatizing. 
Yeah. You yeah. know, traumatizing in the sense because you consciously know that something is being discriminated yeah. and something is being inflicted upon. Yeah. You know. So uh, therefore, you see, uh, uh, pain uh, uh, needs to be differentiated. One kind of pain is which is inflicted. If I prick a needle into your body, yeah. then this is a one kind of pain. And uh, other kind of pain, even if an ant bites you, that's another kind of pain, but you won't mind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you will definitely remember the pricking of the pin, you know, for lifelong. <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, this is very important. <coughs> well, um, Saroj, uh, you have uh, extensively worked on his writings. So, would you uh, initiate uh, this uh, discussion, particularly telling more about his works, and then um, we ask him uh, many other questions. But uh, in a way, you may introduce him uh, as a writer. Uh, and uh, no one else can be better than you uh, to talk about his writings and his works. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, I got introduced to Vasudev uh, Tsunami's works through his book that is Magnum Opus, I say, History of Dalit Culture. In Oriya, yeah, that book is about something like 600 pages and uh, the title is uh, Dalit Sanskriti Itihas. And, uh, in the when I heard about this book in 2009, then I got intrigued and in what kind of book is this. Then I went to his native village, I got the book from his brother and then started reading. That immediately uh, kind of struck something. That this is Dalit Sanskrit Itihas and how the, the, the culture of Dalit people is being written now. Mm -hmm. So that immediately put me into the world of culture, history and folk life, which has not been documented so far. Mm -hmm. uh, because that also uh, kind of raises the question, did the Dalit people have a life and culture of their own? <laughs> because earlier, so far, whatever we had, uh, whether we talk about our uh, Puranic Itiha or any mainstream Itihas history, then we, we get to know about the history of the kings and queens, mm -hmm. you see. So there, the ordinary day-to-day -day, you know, life of the Dalit, ostracized people, untouchables, how does it stand out? Mm -hmm. So that intrigued me. Mm -hmm. Then I spoke to him and then I got to know about his points too. So that, that book is uh, the yeah, Dalit culture? Uh, history of, history Dalit, of culture. Dalit culture. History of Dalit culture. Okay. Yeah. So it is actually, uh, it is cultural history of yeah. Dalit people. And history is a very, very powerful word. Very powerful, very in fact broad term. Yeah. Then that's why I said this is cultural history yeah. and need not be that chronological history. Right, and right. actually he's not talking about the chronological history. Yeah, yeah. He's talking about the cultural life of the people. Yeah, yeah. And then he, he talks about the origin, lineage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. their mythology yeah. and then he talks about their way of life, marriage, ceremony, yeah. Um, different rituals, yes, yes. governing, marriage, yeah, actually, life, and talking things. about yeah. history is, is, is itself uh, an empowering process. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this is how discrimination in identity begins. Exactly. 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 So, uh, uh, to say that we have history uh, makes one kind of idea, and others say uh, you don't have history. Uh, <laughs> It makes another kind of idea. I, yeah. So it is basically it's it is almost like, the identity. Uh, almost like uh, uh, like you will have water from uh, polluted pond and you will have water from the pure pond. Pure, yeah. So yeah. History, well, history is like that. Yeah. You know. So yes. denying water yes. and denying history denying is almost the same same same, 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 same thing. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's one thing you are. Uh, yeah. So thereafter, I I spoke to him. And then I got to know about his points, mm -hmm. and then and then I realized that he had started writing since his school days. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when uh, he he was there in his uh, the, as he was talking about his uh, childhood, since then he had been writing. And then later on, when he went to OUT, Odisha University of Agriculture and Technology, mm -hmm. uh, as a veterinary student, there he had started writing. Uh -huh. And then um, the one of the the earliest writing of the book, that is the title of the book, is the Mahula Varna. Mahula? Mahula Varna. Okay. What does the. Anek Kishi Ghat Kaiwa. Anek? 
अनेक किसी घटिवार है हाँ what does that mean that means many many things is to be told oh many things are to be told आने वे oh first thing okay oh oh right right so he begins with many things to be told and still he is writing so that many things haven't yet haven't yet been told oh yes नहीं I I said Mahola Varna is one of the earliest writings because in the Mahola Varna actually what does that mean Mahola is Mahua flower Mahua flower from which in the countryside you get wine wine Mahua wine ah people make so so Mahola Varna in that way the the forest of the Mahua tree okay where the forest where you have a lot of Mahua tree okay okay it's a very good image but then that actually takes you to that folk and flora and fauna of Kalahandi okay not just Kalahandi broad Bodasambar region Bodasambar and Kharia region you may correct me so Bodasambar Bodasambar that is half of Sambalpur district okay and Kalahandi is Kharia region okay so that's that's a colloquial and I think medieval term that they used to be applied so this area and and this is a poetry collection yeah yeah this is a poetry collection and that actually put him into the this poetical map of Orissa and and then he was he was awarded this Vasanta Muduli prize for that Vasanta Muduli and book fair for that particular collection so it had been well appreciated what is it I mean what are the themes in it लाइफ इन द लैप ऑफ नेचर, ओके, कल्चरल लाइफ इन द लैप ऑफ नेचर, डे टू डे लाइफ ऑफ द फोक, द ऑर्डिनरी फोक, द पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन द इन द इन इन प्रॉक्सिमिटी विथ नेचर, एंड हाउ इन द डे टू डे लाइफ दे हैव डीप सेंस ऑफ क्लोजनेस टू नेचर एंड सम काइंड ऑफ सिंपलिसिटी, राइट, व्हिच इज इन फैक्ट you okay. See, huh? okay. And whatever, so it contains, you know, the uh, the, of the the color and the climate of that particular geography. Geography area, topography. So yeah, yeah. Yes. So it can. It, it is rather a space. Huh. Space. Uh, in, uh, uh, instead of huh. geography. Huh. So that space contains nature uh, imagery. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ah, okay. It, it, it brings it uses and a lot of nature imagery. And does it also uh, have the theme about the social divisions and no, it is there. Yeah, um, it, it, it is there, but uh, the nuances are very subtle. Very subtle. Uh, very subtle. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I, I write it in some of the context in my uh, arguments too. Yeah. So that particular book has been well appreciated mm -hmm. and because it talked about uh, people's proximity with nature, uh -huh. because it talked about nature's imagery, yeah. because it talked about some kind of self-fulfillment mm -hmm. uh, in, in contact with nature. Yeah. The mainstream mainstream Odia critics, uh -huh. Odia uh, literature, and the critics from Odia literature, uh -huh. they looked at that aspect mm -hmm. and they appreciated it, and they glorified this, saying that village is good, village is, and this all this, you know, the typical uh, good thing about village. Mm -hmm. But what they missed in that book, although they were very much present, is also some of this this suppression, oppression, poverty, misery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all these things. Yeah. They are very much there, but the mainstream critics somehow okay, okay. I mean, did not. They, yes, they focus more on the uh, nature. Celebratory part. Yeah, that part. Huh? And uh, it's true huh? that, uh, I mean, uh, irrespective of caste, color, huh? etc., huh? huh? you know, huh? we all are part of uh, one universe. Yes, yes. And uh, it is uh, man made, hmm. and uh, critics, uh, you know, are also not. Hmm. Uh, are political yeah. creatures yeah. Yeah. and they have their politics yes, yes. and uh, sometimes one doesn't declare it yeah. it, is, it is silent yeah. sometimes it is unconscious yeah. but it is very clear yes. that uh, being in India yeah. uh, will automatically affect your mindset by your caste exactly. you know caste is a kind of uh, not a social division mm -hmm. Rather, it is also a division of mind. Yes. So it is mind. Mm -hmm. Caste is mind. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. it is. It is, of course, tangibly mm -hmm. implemented in the social space. Space. But one doesn't know mm -hmm. how one's language, mm -hmm. how one's consciousness, and how one's entire personality is caste mm -hmm. by the caste. Mm -hmm. 
you know, that's right. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, this is quite interesting yes. uh, poetry collection. Uh -huh. It was in the foremost yes. industry, in right. the early phase. Right, right. Then later on, he kept on writing many, uh, many volumes came. Yeah. And then he also wrote many prose pieces. Yeah. And then uh, globalization and the leads. During that period, uh, do you remember any episode uh, which you uh, used as uh, as a motivating force to write one or two or more of the poems of that period. I mean, how was your uh, writing uh, getting energy from? I mean, what was your motivation to write uh, during that period, particularly in the first phase of your writing when this poetic collection comes? And Actually, be before that, I can give uh, my experience, uh, uh -huh. direct my experience there. Uh -huh. Uh, earlier I told that uh, um, our village, our, our area was very poor, we are very poor, we are not giving, uh, we are not getting food, uh -huh. uh, full belly food. Uh -huh. So during that period whenever someone is you know, cultivating their uh, land now, mm. so they used to go to their land uh, for uh, you know, uh, uh, security, so one, once uh, the other person should not store. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, in that sense, we had a, a small piece of land, so we had also cultivated uh, um, uh, uh, this rice. Mm -hmm. So, we, which usually that is the, 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 the main crop. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. usually to you know, um, uh, safeguard that uh, you know, uh, grown up paddy, mm -hmm. we used to go to our land and sleep there. Oh, the idea is that yeah, mm -hmm. keep and watch. Right. The idea is that one should not come and harvest it and take it. Mm -hmm. So the poverty, you can just imagine the intensity of the poverty. Mm -hmm. People were going to the field, just harvesting, cutting some of the you know bunch of you know paddy. Mm -hmm. They were bringing it and uh, just uh, preparing uh, their food and they are taking uh, uh, in the night itself. Mm -hmm. So that was the you know situation of the poverty. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we were also going our uh, land to you know protect uh, uh, our uh, grown up family. Mm -hmm. So in the land, what happens? My father used to sing uh, some traditional songs. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, uh, he used to uh, sing every day uh -huh. uh, in the you know uh, uh, winter. Uh, Early morning. You remember uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some, of, some of the lines yeah, of the songs? Yeah. Can you my, just uh, yeah. share with us? My, yes. my father was actually, whenever they were in a small fire, they were ah. happy, you know, winter, ah. very cold. Ah. So, with a, uh, in a severing mood, my father used to um, sing Bai Manare, Basi Hansa Kukhela. Uh, these are the, some of the songs uh, he used to sing. Bai Manare, mana Basi Hansa Kukhela. This is a famous song. Bai Manare. Oh, oh, mad mind. Uh -huh. I am not in a very negative sense. Oh, oh. mad mind. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, uh, wait and uh, start playing with your hands. Hands that oh, is spirit. Yes. Okay. Start. Play okay. with your spirit. Okay. Yeah. This actually is very important. Uh -huh. this, this spiritual. Is, this this oh. imagery of hands. Hans is uh, very powerful in the entire medieval yes. literature ah, yes, yes, yes. and uh, even Kabir, ah. uh, even Rai Ramidas, even uh, you know many other poets you know there is a lot of reference to Hansa yeah, yeah, and yeah. this Hansa is you know a very different kind of thing yes. in that entire poetry ah, yeah okay in so fact, in fact yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in western Orissa uh -huh. uh, we have uh, uh, in the medieval age we had uh, um, Mahima Ramu, yeah. that is uh, uh, Dima boy, right? Dima boy. Dima boy. A great uh, boy. Great boy. The saint boy. Uh -huh. yeah. And he what is what is his name? Dima boy. Dima boy. Dima boy. Yeah, okay. And blind boy, uh -huh. saint boy. Uh -huh. okay. And who had started a almost a parallel uh -huh. new religion which is called Mahima Dharma. Mahima Dharma. Uh -huh. He was a uh -huh. he, was, he was contemporary to you know Mahatma Phule. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So very much 19th century. 19th century. Right. So, right. so that, you know, the whole corpus of Mahima Dharma, then written by this blind poet, uh -huh. actually is part of this colloquial and, you know, oral tradition. Uh -huh. That uh, the Bai Manare, uh, Vasi Hansa uh -huh. and play your, uh, your uh, play with your Hans, mm -hmm. uh, oh my dear uh, mad mind. Yeah. So actually that is, you know, that is some way of re reflecting to that tradition. Oh, yes. uh, so uh, once uh, I asked my, I was impressed upon those poetry. Uh -huh. uh, about its recitation, uh -huh. uh, it, it gives me immense pleasure uh -huh. uh, hearing this song. 
Right. So right. once I uh, asked my father, oh, who is the writer of this uh, poem? So what what you are singing? <laughs> so my father, in one sentence, he told me, uh, it is written by poets. Mm -hmm. So during that period, I have not heard the name of poet or the word poet. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. It is maybe I was reading uh, uh, three four uh, standard, three right. fourth standard, three uh -huh. fourth, within fifth standard. Mm -hmm. So um, he told me ki it is written by poet. So I thought that poet may be some different kind of people. They must be <laughs> some different kind of brain, oh. some more uh, right. uh, limbs. Yeah, yeah. This kind of uh, understanding was inside with my mind. Mm -hmm. Then. Then after a long gap, when I was reading on ninth, uh -huh. ninth standard, uh -huh. once uh, one of my teacher came and he announced that we will bring out a uh, magazine, uh -huh. and uh, in our annual function, school annual function, it will be released. Mm -hmm. So you contribute your articles, your poems, and uh, your writings. Mm -hmm. So I remember correctly that I am the only student who stand up and. Uh, I replied, I mean, my teacher, mm -hmm. ki, uh, we have to borrow the article from poets. Right. We have to find out the poets. Uh -huh. Because we will bring out a magic. Uh -huh. So everybody laughed at me and even my teacher also laughed at me. So I couldn't understand. <laughs> so yes, yes. again, again, uh, 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 he told me, my teacher told me, Actually, uh, we need not require to bring article, poetry, uh, and uh, other you know uh, writings from uh, other poet. Mm -hmm. If you write, if you write, you can be also a poet. Oh. So in that that's way, I was able to know he actually I can be also a poet. I can also write. Oh yes. And uh, uh, you uh, just uh, believe me. Uh -huh. From that night, I started writing. Oh, that's great. That was <laughs> that's great. In my story. I, I can really understand this. You know, how uh, how a performer requires a role. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, therefore, performance power is there in everybody. Uh -huh. Normally, roles are not given. Not given. Or if they are given, they are given in a very, you know, in a, in a manner that, you know, they can cast people into different kinds of categories, cast and so on and so forth. So, uh, I mean, getting the role of poet, uh, I think is... That was in, you know, instrumental oh, in yes, yes, very, preparing very, very instrumental. Yeah, 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 yeah. And another thing I can give an example that when I was a student of veterinary college, mm -hmm. During that period, you know, in in, in 85, there was a heavy mob um, drought. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, people were migrating. Migrating. yeah, yeah, yeah. People were migrating from our district. And during that period, uh, Nuapara district was not there. Mm -hmm. it there was, was no division. It was, it was a, Kalahandi. Yeah, it was in Kalahandi district. Okay. So it was it was counted uh, the most uh, uh, poorest district among the 20 districts of India. Mm -hmm. 20 poorest district of India was mm -hmm. one of the Kalani district. Mm -hmm. So during that period, you know, uh, I, I had written a poetry. Pereño to me sarkar jatha sikra tumar adhikar sabha pao nahi kalahandi da tamani dira murdar. So this kind of protest poetry I have written. So during that period, actually, Congress government was there and someone... Um, uh, the, this, all this poetry, 19 poetry, it appeared in one uh, daily magazine, mm -hmm. a popular, uh, I mean, newspaper. Mm -hmm. So but everybody become uh, envious ki who is Vasudev Sumani, a uh, full page uh, has been covered uh, uh, with his poetry and the editor, the I remember. The title of that, that whole uh, publication was yes, Kalahandi Kala Andhari Andhari Wala. Andhari Wala. That means the dark shades of Kalahandi. Kalahandi. Vala, Valaya is actually the, actually okay. in the, you have this round circle in, uh, around uh, uh -huh. Saturn, uh -huh. so that is Valaya. So uh -huh. here, you know, just like the uh, circle, round circle um, around Saturn, right. you have the Kalahandi, the, the circles, dark circles of Kalahandi. Okay. And it is, the Kalahandi name is, you know, black, uh -huh. Uh -huh. black and uh -huh. dark. Handi uh -huh. the thought, uh -huh. but Kalahandi along with this dark circle, and dark circle is the poverty uh -huh. and and this uh, uh -huh. you know drought. Uh -huh. 
this uh, this 19 poetry you know appeared in hirakand uh -huh. and then uh, the editor was uh, you know kumar hasan he was not known to me subsequently i inquired who is that man uh -huh. who actually uh, published my 19th poetry covering one whole page so there was a hue and cry and uh, um, as i uh, heard from uh, the editor kumar hasan because of that poetry he was removed oh uh, from his job okay. and uh, during that period people were searching to kill me because i had written uh, many you know uh, uh, um, uh, many uh, things uh, against uh, the government right. establishment establishment, establishment yeah. or say it gave a new belief system yeah, yeah, yeah. it challenged the old belief system yeah. you know so there were expressions you yeah. know which uh, people uh, uh, violence uh, yeah, yeah. in india yeah. is uh, is considered to be uh, not possible yeah. but actually uh, i think uh, any society which discriminates people on the basis of color caste etc mm -hmm. is a violent society yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, they can easily take up violence when something goes against them incidentally yeah. that was also the time i suppose uh, when uh, this uh, child selling took place that's okay that's what child I selling and that's how rajiv gandhi had paid a visit, visit to okay, kalahandi okay, okay. and that's how even kalahandi went yeah, to the that, map of global that is oh, that's the right the the history that the history yeah. after kpk yeah. kalahandi kalahandi yeah, yeah, yeah. and kolaput are oh. and are put in the very much you know yeah. eternally drought prone area in in odisha okay. so they actually the actually the drought was in 85 86 and during that period you know mm -hmm. a, 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 a tribal lady uh, sell out uh, her uh, sister in law mm -hmm. phanas punji is the lady mm -hmm. so she sell out uh, out of poverty she mm -hmm. sell out her uh, sister mm -hmm. sister in law mm -hmm. so it became the global news mm -hmm. therefore in 1989 uh, the then prime minister of india mm -hmm. uh, sri rajiv gandhi ji visited uh, kalahandi district mm -hmm. after he uh, visiting he actually realized the thing at uh, coming back to you know uh, delhi mm -hmm. he announced the scheme what uh, uh, sarod was talking about ki kalahandi balangir and korapur korapur that region mm -hmm. we are talking about the dense forest the unprivileged or the you know uh, uh -huh. the undeveloped region mm -hmm. so to give a focus for the development of that particular area KBK scheme was implemented and that was totally funded by government of India. Okay. So, uh, if uh, uh, we take into consideration, why sh why should I say if we need to take into consideration all these uh, uh, events and all these uh, circumstances of uh, the uh, habitat, you know, uh, where you you got you 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 were raised. Now. Uh, So, do you think that uh, your poetry or your literature is a witness of the times, these times? Yeah, but I definitely say that uh, people actually, the other my uh, co-poets, co-writers, they have been writing out of many imaginations. Mm -hmm. What I see, what I observe, but whatever I actually write, I read, I write the reality, mm -hmm. all the you know characters. all the characters of my poetry my prose my novel my short stories even my essays mm -hmm. all are real mm -hmm. therefore they come out of real life experience all come out of uh, it come up, comes from the real experience mm -hmm. so in that context definitely you can say ki particularly when i am talking about hajur dandi one poetry is there hajur dandi he is migrating from uh, my place to you know um, Uh, Hyderabad for mm -hmm. uh, making of the brick. Mm -hmm. If you speak about the Pura Maji, mm -hmm. Pura Maji who had been to you know somewhere like uh, uh, your um, um, Karim Nagar mm -hmm. and he died. Mm -hmm. My village uh, uh, member mm -hmm. Pura Maji. So uh, I have written a poetry on him. Mm -hmm. So likewise, uh, you can see all the characters are living characters. Maybe some are living, uh, some might have uh, in the meantime died. Mm -hmm. But then the characters or the you know uh, the situation mm -hmm. are actually very much contemporary. You know, right, uh, right. it is related to you know person, yeah. related to time, related yeah. to situation. Right, right. And so, so normally we use the word fiction, mm -hmm. but uh, in reality. 
it is uh, experience mm -hmm. and it is uh, experience not again of the objective type but of the subjective type which yeah. means that the way you have lived with people yeah. and the way you have actually assimilated them in your life yeah. and that you speak. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Uh, that, is, that is how actually I got into my research area, the history of Dalit history. Yeah, 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 that's uh, what I'm because I, I could see in his poems. Uh, could you uh, elaborate a little bit of the idea of Dalit historiography? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's yeah. actually it's actually uh, uh, this uh, this realism that he's talking about yeah. and the and the base on reality. Uh, uh, when I read his poems, then I I could see that almost every event, incident, person or place mm -hmm. has some affinity to some real thing which mm -hmm. is existing there. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I realized, then I went back to my own studies and then I realized mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we talk about history, history writing mm -hmm. you know? and then when you talk about history writing, historiography is basically history writing, how history is written. Mm -hmm. So then uh, there uh, since generation, since our childhood, we have been told that history is written about the real thing mm. that had occurred. Mm -hmm. And we had not realized that uh, some amount of selection had taken place while writing history. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here, here I could see that although Basudev Sunani does not give us the actual chronology date, mm. yet he writes about the real people. Mm -hmm. So why can't his writing be termed as history? Mm -hmm. huh? Mm. Although it is without dates, mm. so it is up to us and maybe the critics and the historiographers to look into the dates in them, mm. go back and research the dates. So can, you, can, can you say it's more about historicity? Yeah, historicization can take yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Historicity can be there, yeah. but that can be read because ultimately, as, as the historiography has gone under the changes, and now we we know that history is not just only the fact which exists, oh, right, right. but it is also. You know, it's some, some amount of addition of meaning and interpretation it's, of the meaning. It's always yeah. there. Yeah. It's always so, there. Yeah. So, as we see in, from the uh, from the perspective of Dr. Vasudev Sunani, mm. the life as it happened in Kalahandi. Mm. So, they are real life. Mm. They had characters, mm. just as any history has characters. Mm. So, it is one of the one of the ways of narrating history. Yeah. Uh, writing down history. Right. Right. Just so that's how Dalit historiography mm. can have its archive in Dalit literature what he's producing. Okay. Adding to, uh, adding, sorry, adding to uh, just I uh, supplement to Saroj. Whatever I have written uh, in uh, Kalahandi Andhari Malaya, during that period there was a heavy drought. So uh -huh. drought period is very much that time is documented, yes. very much documented. The visit of uh, you know Prime Minister is very much documented. So mm -hmm. it speaks about the time and space also. Okay. And place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you told us uh, you are you are ten brothers and sisters. Yeah. And uh, seven sisters are there. Yeah. Uh, would you like to talk about uh, seven sisters? Um, this phrase is yeah. also very lovely. Uh, seven sisters. Uh, yes, seven yes. sisters. In fact, there are seven. This. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. In fact, not only not only we have seven sisters in uh, in terms of northeast yeah, region, yeah, 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 yeah. But even in uh, uh, Odia, uh, you know, folk uh -huh. or, or rural right, mythology, right, right. you have seven sisters. Oh, yeah. Sat Bahini. Yeah. <laughs> seven Bahini is a very really, uh, seven very sisters. interesting idea. And, you know. and in Brahminical uh -huh. literature also, in Puranic literature also, we have seven sisters. You know that is seven uh, Saptamatruka. Okay. Uh, so seven is a uh, seven is a sufficient. Uh, 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 so, uh, yeah. so he may not have those. Yeah. But tell us, tell us, name yeah. all the sisters <laughs> and the, how you actually relate up to them. <laughs> and uh, see, my uh, how do you see yourself in the mirror of seven sisters? Uh, yes. <laughs> some some of my sisters have already died. The first one is still there, she is old and uh, recently well, she is going to uh, marry her uh, daughter, uh, son mm -hmm. and uh, the second one has already died mm -hmm. and the third one has also already died. Mm -hmm. The fourth one is my brother, he is uh, um, there mm -hmm. uh, with his uh, family, full-fledged family. Mm. And uh, the next one is uh, my sister, mm. her husband has already died. Mm. And the next one is uh, just, uh, um, I mean, above me, mm. she is uh, my sister, she is living with her full fledged family. Mm. And then me, mm. 
mm -hmm. and then uh, my sister again my sister mm -hmm. she is uh, with a uh, our uh, full pledged family mm -hmm. then my brother mm -hmm. the younger one mm -hmm. uh, he is also living with his uh, family mm -hmm. and the uh, i mean youngest uh, sister she is uh, living with his uh, no family mm -hmm. uh, what are what are the names of all the sisters so uh, uh, first first one is nurpamani nurpamani and uh, nurpamani nurpamani yeah okay acha second one is uh, uh, pilamani pilamani yeah okay right third one is sulochana sulochana yeah. right sulochana we have here in yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. my brother uh, my brother is rishikesh rishikesh yeah rishikesh rishikesh yeah. rishikesh okay. one of the krishnas okay yeah. right 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 and uh, then next to rishikesh my brother is mithila okay <laughs> yeah. right after right. 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 yeah. right. Uh -huh. Then next to Mithila is Karuna, uh -huh. uh, just above me. Okay. And then me is Vasudev. Okay. <laughs> right. And then after so, me. So you are that means you are the seventh, seventh, seventh one. one. I'm uh -huh. the seventh one. Okay. 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 I'm the seventh one. Uh -huh. And uh, the next one, uh, uh, next to me, mm -hmm. next to me is Prabhati. Prabhati. Okay. Yeah, Prabhati. Okay. And uh, next to Prabhati is my younger brother. He is Ganesh. 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 Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, the last one, uh -huh. last one is uh, Anjana. Anjana. Yeah. Okay. So if you put all these names together, <laughs> we have an entire universe. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, everything is there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, even career of Krishna <laughs> crossing the river, Vasudeva. <laughs> Vasudeva. Okay. He is also there. Yes. Uh, so and Karuna is there. Karuna is there. Anjana is there. Anjana is there. Sura Sura is there. Is there. <laughs> okay. So oh, that's wonderful, actually. Yeah. And. Um, so uh, you know this uh, uh, large family uh, does it also influence uh, uh, the emotional development of uh, you so definitely definitely I have reflected uh, many of the day to day life the the, the problems of my family mm -hmm. my sisters uh, problems my brothers problem and everything is that it has been reflected in my mm -hmm. poetry. And particularly, if you uh, go through one of my poetry book, that is Karodi Hatta, mm -hmm. that is totally based on the characters. What is the name of Karodi, Karodi Hatta? Karodi means a, a, it's a bamboo bamboo sprout. Oh, bamboo sprout. Bamboo, bamboo sprout. Yeah. Yeah. That is cut out into this much uh, pieces, uh, pieces uh, and that is eaten. That is oh, okay. It's a, it's a dish. Okay. Yeah. 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 Particularly yeah. during the uh, July, 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 July. More fibrous. Uh, yeah. 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 Very good. And in fact, all of us have eaten. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So it's mm -hmm. wonderful. And so yeah. that is a uh, the name of the poetry book is Karadi Hatta. Uh, the Why? market which sells this Karadi. Yeah. Yeah. Hat, Hatta. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing is there. Oh, all the you know uh, characters, mm -hmm. and uh, many of the characters belong to my family. I mean, I mean uh, my village uh, uh, members. Mm -hmm. Right. And some of uh, the characters are uh, from uh, different villages yes, or from yes, different yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 district also where I have I was working. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as uh, I see in your uh, bio data. I could see you have written poetry, you have written novels, you have written short stories, you have written essays, and you have written articles, you have participated in seminars, conferences, you have read papers, and uh, you have also done some polemic writing like uh, Ambedkarism and uh, other areas. So, in uh, this way, uh, your whole uh, area of work, uh, both creative work and critical work, uh, is uh, very vast. So, how do you actually manage this whole? You know, many threads are there, and you know, how how do you? And why why don't you restrict yourself to creative writing? Why do you go into different areas? My essay there also, uh, if you see, those are uh, 
creative kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely I have referred some of the books, journals, other things. But then out of the creativity it has come. And uh, uh, because uh, uh, the situation or the condition uh, directs you what uh, in uh, which way or in which form the thing has to be presented mm -hmm. that has directed me either to write poetry or to write short story or to write novel or to write uh, or to uh, reflect in the form of uh, essays mm -hmm. so uh, so if you write if you try to you know write the essay context uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the form of poetry, it may not, you know, appear in a way you are expected. Mm -hmm. like you are expecting or you are uh, desiring to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, actually, the situation or the text itself or the uh, thinking or the, 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 the context, mm -hmm. what is, uh, you know, uh, conceptualized in your mind, mm -hmm. it directs you to, you know, uh, uh, arrive the things. Uh, Whatever, no. Do you do you know that Dalit writing actually challenges most of the boundaries which are created in uh, literature, and uh, Dalit writing is more experience based, and uh, it blurs the boundaries of tragedy, comedy, or satire, or so on and so forth. Rather, it brings into uh, a space which is composed of many things simultaneously at the same time. That is why you know most of the Dalit writers are you know creative writers. So, but creativity for them is more experience, and that experience is uh, is creative for anyone. There are people who don't tell their experience. I see. I sometimes I ask upper caste people, why don't you write your experiences? But uh, why do you always say it is imagination? And why do you accuse uh, Dalit writers to? actually base themselves on experiences. So writing experience, do you think it is something uh, which empowers uh, Dalit writers? We have uh, actually what you told earlier, ki, the challenges what you told. The, the very concept of you know, Dalit mm -hmm. is a, is a, is a, is a, is a now a, a, a group of people who, which has been deprived mm -hmm. and therefore if you are you know uh, talking about them means you are talking against the establishment mm -hmm. so definitely whatever you are writing that is a challenge mm -hmm. against the society I mean the mainstream society so called mainstream society I, because uh, if you calculate uh, as per the you know population now mm -hmm. the ruling class is very few in numbers Mm -hmm. And the you know the uh, 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 the deprived sections are much more. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, uh, that is also a you know uh, 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 in a confusion that whether um, who are the you know uh, mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mainstream means uh, yeah. whether the more people are in the to talk about the volume or, 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 or the minority. Mm -hmm. I mean the mainstream main is the fiction. Uh, yeah, mainstream is yeah. the fiction. Therefore. Actually, um, uh, I, 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 I see ki someone has established that uh, you are a lawyer and uh, you don't have this right, mm -hmm. this kind of thing, whatever they have uh, written. Mm -hmm. And uh, from ages, mm -hmm. it has been proved mm -hmm. by their intellectuality. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, to challenge it, to counter it, definitely it's a challenge. Yeah. And uh, I hope actually from imagination, how, what can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Unless and until uh, you feel from your core of heart, from your own experience, then uh, the, 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 uh, you cannot connote, you cannot represent the mm -hmm. appropriate words, mm -hmm. appropriate things, mm -hmm. which will be a readable uh, word. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, uh, uh, I think uh, experience is highly yeah, essential. Yeah. Experience is highly yeah, essential yeah, yeah. for any creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, and uh -huh. I hope uh, those who are writing uh, in imagination uh -huh. that has already been challenged, uh -huh. and it is no more sustainable. Uh -huh. It means that uh, in imagination you hide experience. Yeah. So hiding experience is also a kind of. Uh, 
कासिस्ट क्रिएटिविटी यू नो कासिस्ट क्रिएटिविटी बिकॉज यू यू हाइड योर एक्सपीरियंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल एज एन अपर कास्ट द वे आई ट्रीट लोअर कास्ट पीपल देन आई हैव टू हाइड दैट एक्सपीरियंस यू आर हाइडिंग एक्सपीरियंस मीन यू आर हाइडिंग द फैक्ट Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hiding the fact. Yeah. So, so I'm not telling in my autobiography yeah. that uh, who comes to my house to mm-hmm. claim it mm-hmm. and how I behave with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you need to actually have imagination. Yeah. You know, so that you can some way manage the space in democratic times. Yeah. That no, no, you are actually different person. Yeah. But uh, in reality, a lot of behavioral aspects which we indulge into. they are hidden there yeah so imagination experience together uh, also create another area what is being hidden and what is being revealed yeah you know that's also very interesting yeah, yeah uh, saroj uh, um, uh, interact uh, um, uh, with uh, vasudev on his uh, novels autobiography and uh, make it uh, accessible to our audience and uh, we hope that uh, uh, the way you would put it would motivate them to go and read yes yeah. <coughs> thank you uh, just before i go to the uh, novel part maybe i can just uh, share some of my ideas about my observations about what you are discussing just right now uh, why there is so much of veracity so much of uh, you know Uh, wide variations in sunani's works uh-huh. uh, what i have kind of observed on although he is not uh, saying it out is that it, he is constant engaging with the ideas uh-huh. constantly i think why he is writing poems as well as the prose as well as the uh, short stories and the longer fiction that is the novel mm-hmm. i think he is what whether you call it a creative mind or a critical mind mm-hmm. it is constantly engaging itself with the idea of this human being who is known and un- untouchable as the lead a deprived person uh, an oppressed person mm-hmm. and he is pre- predicament in the society mm-hmm. since he is engaged with these things somewhere or other he is critically attached to it he is critically uh, analyzing those things and so that's why maybe uh, in different times different ways of looking at it uh-huh. and that's how he uh, kind of formulates yeah. it ideas yeah. probably that's the way yeah. uh-huh. and secondly about the, the creation and imagination part uh-huh. uh as you rightly put it uh, creation when uh, when we say creation uh, and when we, we go back to the earliest you know we, we, because when we talk about the uh, english literature scenario we go back to the earlier uh, aristotelian formula of you know uh, minus is uh-huh. imitation uh-huh. so how do we create uh-huh. so we create by imitating uh-huh. that's it so what do we imitate mm-hmm. uh, we imitate life mm-hmm. uh, so here even in the so called mainstream quote unquote uh, uh, sense of creation mm-hmm. there a lot of imitation a lot of copying yeah. going on yeah. uh, so so the process of creation invariably would involve this copying down or representing or putting together which is already there mm-hmm. in different forms <coughs> so how many what is the percentage of this copying down or what is the percent of this the so called very similitude or truths veracity what do you say that depends on the writer mm-hmm. in case of the dalit writers probably that ex- because experience is the most formidable thing for them mm-hmm. they cannot afford to shoo them away mm-hmm. they cannot afford to keep them aside yeah. that's why that's why that something most powerfully present mm-hmm. in case of the other ones they because they have the advantages backgrounds mm-hmm. they can afford to they can afford to keep them aside mm-hmm. and that's how they can hide as you rightly said hide certain things mm-hmm. pretension uh, yeah. pretension and they say they are goody goody things mm-hmm. life is beautiful yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so here since for life for these people uh, you know it's, it's not the the same as the life of advantageous background people yeah, yeah. they cannot afford to do it so uh-huh. i think yeah. so from there on maybe i can uh, shift to uh, his what is novel is about poda podi 
Koda Podi is can be translated uh, into English as you know burning of the Hamlet. Uh, what's uh, that? Burning, burning of burning Hamlet. Of ham Hamlet. Hamlet. Okay. A, a group of the uh, house, house is uh, mm -hmm. So in that way, uh, burning down of the Hamlet okay. in a village center. Okay. And it is uh, it is set in the village rural uh, semi urban kind of uh, town uh, in Latour mm -hmm. and is based on. Uh, one of the real incidents that took place in 2012, uh, January 21st. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, you can uh, tell us something about uh, not accident, incident that took place in Western Odisha. Mm -hmm. And Western Odisha, Latour town, you say rural town. Mm -hmm. And Latour incidentally is the one of the uh, rural marketplace in that way and in, in Balangir district. And is known for timber market, mm -hmm. uh, good and, and all black market, timber market. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, there uh, all this uh, caste configuration is very important. Actually, that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. The majority dominant caste is the Marwari. Mm -hmm. The second, and they are although they are less in number. Yes. Then the second majority caste, and even uh, bigger, biggest uh, in number is the Bhulia, that is the waiver class. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is the Ganda caste. Ganda caste, then the untouchable caste. And so and then there are uh, other smaller castes, yeah, OBC and OBC. So but the main stakeholders in terms of power and and, and strength mm -hmm. is the Marwadi, Bhulia and Ganda. Mm -hmm. What happens in that particular village, sorry the township, because the Marwadis are the uh, the you know they are the controller of economy because of their shops and trades and business mm -hmm. and they they are the topmost. Then Bhuliyas because they have the number they are the second. Mm -hmm. And the because the Ganda caste people are larger in number in terms of education, mm -hmm. they hold some amount of a kind of uh, influence and actually they they have the capacity to actually you know imbalance the power structure, mm -hmm. traditional power structure. Mm -hmm. And because they are not shows. So in that what happened, there was there was this episode and one one and in, and in that in that Kanda caste actually uh, incidentally uh, in that whole village four to five uh, MA postgraduate students who had uh, uh, had their uh, chance to education in various universities mm -hmm. and one of the uh, MA student postgraduate student had a love affair with one of the Bhulia girl that is the waving class waving caste girl. Mm -hmm. So that had uh, actually enraged the communities, mm -hmm. upper caste community, the Bhuliyas and the, uh, the Marwadis, because they were they were challenged by this this socio political and educational upward movement of the Gandas. Mm -hmm. So that's why they were in the lookout for some opportunity to kind of you know, avenge. Mm -hmm. They did not want their girl to be married to the lower caste person. That's why they were in the lookout. Mm -hmm. They got a chance when one of the uh, Ganda boy, the lower caste boy, went to one of the shops of this Bhulia person, mm -hmm. one of the Bhulia shops, and then he buys a, a t-shirt or some of the, uh, the banya, mm -hmm. inner wear, mm -hmm. and he goes out. But then the boys were there, they, uh, they accused him of stealing one of the one, uh, inner clothes. So that, uh, that boy came back and said, okay, they'll see, look at here, I have not uh, taken anything and you are unnecessarily accusing me. Mm -hmm. And uh, those uh, two boys, the shop owner's boys, they beat him around. Mm -hmm. So when this boy uh, goes back to his own hamlet, his mm -hmm. own uh, locality, other uh, educated boys were there and they, from his own caste, they were there and they, um, they inquired about it, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. Then he narrates the incident that these people, they beat me off. Then those people came back and then they had the, some altercations and that led to some minor uh, scuffle. Mm -hmm. And this minor scuffle was rumored as something as if the Ganda people had bitten the Bhulia boys. Mm -hmm. And this rumor, this, this was rumor and then the Bhulia people spread out this rumor and then Marwadi people supported them actively and almost 300 Bhulia people from not only that same village but the, uh, the adjoining villages came together, blocked the roads from both sides of the 
uh, uh, rural Township. plateau township mm. and they burned down the whole 45 village, 45 houses mm. of the Kanda mm. community. Mm. So that was the episode, that actual episode that took place. The state missionary was almost paralyzed. Mm. The district administration could not do anything. And when they came for dowsing the fire, the, the fire attendant machine was burned down again. So that's how. They were almost kind of hand in glove, although not apparently not uh, clear openly, but somewhere. And they said we cannot do anything because election is coming and this and that. Mm -hmm. So this happened and um, this was the real story. Mm -hmm. Vasudev Sunani takes up this story. He takes up this fact, uh -huh. which was an actual episode, uh -huh. where the whole 45 houses have been burned down. Mm -hmm. It was a minor uh, incident. Mm -hmm. And then he puts together and he uh, not only revisits into the uh, root cause of the problem, mm -hmm. but also he contextualizes the whole uh, situation, okay. whereby what happens to the Gonda, who are these Gondas, mm -hmm. and what are the other things that are happening. So that's how you have another main thread adjacent to the this thing, yeah. the, the movement, the migration of the Gonda caste people, many of the Gonda caste people, the adjacent, adjacent areas, belonging to the adjacent areas, mm -hmm. migrating to nearby uh, Raipur. Raipur is yeah. by the way the, uh, capital the nearest, city. nearest capital city mm -hmm. of uh, such a yes, So they migrate to that place as rickshaw puller and why they migrate, what are the caste configurations in the villages mm -hmm. and how the Gauntia in the village actually uh, overpowers everything and for minor things um, uh, he, uh, you know, he punishes one of the persons, Makaru I know, and then they go away. What happens to their plight? They are in in Raipur. He goes and finds a place among his own caste fellows. Mm -hmm. He works as a rickshaw puller. And while coming back, and that was that Makaru Suna is coming back mm -hmm. to Lathore when he has heard about this story mm -hmm. of this burning down. Okay. So that's how two different streams are wedded together right, right. to create, recreate this whole burning down at this yeah, right. So there, from the character of, of from the perspective of Makaru Suna, yeah. uh, one of these uh, Uganda caste persons, mm -hmm. from, the, from his point of view, the whole uh, burning down episode is revisited. Okay, okay. So there, uh, Makaru Suna revisits his childhood. Oh. What prompted his father to migrate to right? Oh. How he and he was, uh, you know, he, he went there. Mm -hmm. And what happens to his children? And what happens to his culture? Mm -hmm. So called, you know, again coming back to Dalit yeah. culture because they are, you know, uh, as Vasudev Sunani was talking, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to the culture? And again, what were the other factors which had actually propelled and 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 worked as ghee in fire mm -hmm. to this uh, this burning episode? Mm -hmm. Because the it was not just one episode or one the boy meets girl or that, that violence that was there. Mm -hmm. There are other things because the, as the, uh, the, uh, the Dalit people, the Ganda caste people were increasingly being educated and as assertive about their life, mm -hmm. they wanted to take part in Durga Puja, mm -hmm. in the, in okay. the, in, in the Durga Puja celebration. They wanted to enter the, uh, the, the temple. Uh -huh. uh, so in that, this Hulia and uh, Marwadis were enraged earlier. So, uh -huh. you know, it was a combination of so many other factors which were actually leading up to this. That was uh, just a triggering point. Triggering yeah, point. Yeah. Trigger. So, so yeah. there has already there was a lot of uh, suffocation. So so, so, so in that from the perspective of Makara you you revisit and there you know when Makara goes and uh, uh, talks to Chitra Sensuna, one of the community heads, right. the the opto gender entity, you know, someone and, and asks him. What is the root cause of this problem? Why couldn't you actually avoid it? Mm -hmm. You are the community leader, and why couldn't you do it? Why couldn't you avoid it? Mm -hmm. Then Makaru, uh, the, then the Chitra Sensuna, uh, very, uh, very, uh, in a very characteristic style uh, uh, and very pessimistic uh, tone, uh, tells, uh, replies him, uh, this was all our fault. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, they say this looks ironical. How is the burning and the victims, how is it the victim's fault mm -hmm. uh, to be burned down? Or mm -hmm. how is it the victim's fault to, 
to have his house and burn down. It is ironical. But through that irony, actually, Vasudha Suna is trying to actually give a meaning to that because what he is, what, what Chitrasen Suna is trying to tell there is, we went after Durga, we went after Hanuman, leaving behind our Niyali Mali, our Duasali. So here there is a, here there is a main point, the cultural conflicts. Mm -hmm. Dalits or Gandakas people have they had their, since time in Oriel, uh, probably, they had their own local deities. Mm -hmm. They had their Niyali Mali goddess, okay. a deity, okay. female goddess. Uh -huh. Duarsani, du again female goddess, female deity, uh -huh. who did not need Sanskrit language, organization and all kinds of pujas. Uh -huh. uh, who could be propitiated and who could be satisfied in their home. Mm -hmm. But because the Dalits educated the Dalits, educated uh, Gandhas, they become you know, they became slightly Sanskritized, Brahmanized, and modernized. They were under the influence of all these things, and they wanted to take part in the village celebration of Durga Puja mm -hmm. and, yeah. and other things, yeah. which was the primarily the forte of this this uh, upper caste people. So more like carnival. Carnival. So actually, again, you see uh, this dialogical ah. area ah. Com comes into picture. Yes. I mean, who, whatever God is there, ah. Ah. but one thing is very clear that there is a large crowd. Large crowd. Yeah. And uh, people have gathered. Ah. Now, if some communities ah. are not allowed to enter that ah. area, ah. Ah. so it becomes uh, a point of view that that in the carnival mm -hmm. where you can subvert many kinds of notions mm -hmm. and social structures mm -hmm. living together if for five hours or ten hours mm -hmm. so if you deny that period mm -hmm. then you are actually creating a mode of violence mm -hmm. you know yes, yes. so uh, of course you know uh, people want to participate mm -hmm. in that so, so that thing mm -hmm. was that from the perspective of Chitra Sinsuna, probably that was a mistake. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, living ones or relinquishing ones or forgetting ones, neglecting ones, own deities mm -hmm. and going after someone else deity. <laughs> so then he is creating that agreement because yeah. he is actually you know, giving this uh, interpretation that actually all the Brahmanical deities were the Brahmanical forefathers. Yeah, yeah. All the deities were at one point of time their forefathers. Mm -hmm. And the deities of the Gandhas were their own forefathers. Yeah. So probably in a, in a different context, maybe in a cultural context, why did you go up to them to, to say uh, in what we say in Hindi, ah, well, mm -hmm. So that kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. that was one powerful statement Chitra Suna, Chitra Sen Suna had to make. Okay, okay, uh, okay. That was one thing. And which actually says that go and revisit your own culture. Mm -hmm. But maybe you get you get, get back to your own culture and you and maybe you take pride in your own life rather than following someone else. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. In a very clever manner, mm -hmm. without even telling it, Basudev Sunami is probably trying to say that your identity, whether it is given, you know, whether whatever the identity as a Dalit, your identity as a Dalit, although it is given by the outsiders. Still, now that you have already got it, you start looking at some of the aspects that makes this identity and there are certain things that which, which can be said to be human about it and you start asserting it. So, without ever actually saying it, he is actually meaning it. Right. So, so yeah. that is the identity so, formation, yeah. that is one of the stages. What is the uh, one uh, area that you have also worked in is uh, writing uh, play scripts. Uh, some scripts for drama. Yeah. So, uh, are these the ones which were performed, and uh, uh, what kind of drama do you write? And uh, would you uh, tell us more about uh, uh, out of uh, different kinds of writings, poetry, novel, etc. Using dramatic, uh, uh, dramatic uh, text and performance uh, makes uh, much more impact than other uh, forms or or you think no they are all uh, the same I mean what is uh, it with you? Uh, of course uh, I cannot uh, instantly say the, 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 
the intensity or the percentage of impact. Uh -huh. But definitely uh, I have written a drama. Mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning also in my school career, you know, uh, I was acting and in my college career also I was actor. Mm -hmm. I have uh, been awarded by my college and university mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. and usually whatever drama I have uh, written I used to give direction mm -hmm. and uh, I also used to you know art mm -hmm. so uh, so uh, of course uh, I cannot say but then um, the, the number of you know writings uh, poetry you know uh, I mean uh, this uh, poetry and such stories and uh, essays um, if I compare mm -hmm. I have written only three drama mm -hmm. three drama and uh, one has been actually staged. Okay. One has been already, uh, already staged. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, appreciated like anything in my sphere. Mm -hmm. But other uh, other drama, maybe I have not given that much of, you know, of uh, time to make it staged. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, uh, it could not be possible. Mm -hmm. And so far, the impact is uh, you know, concerned. Definitely, one can assess the feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback. Mm -hmm. Immediately, one can get the feedback okay. after the drama is in stage. Mm -hmm. But in case of you know uh, novel writing or poetry or um, or other writings, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it, it takes time to you know get feedback from the people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though though I have seen ki, uh, in Korea, people say uh, my book are not being published, my book are not being you know uh, uh, purchased. But mm -hmm. all of my you know, poetry books, uh, novel and uh, 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 essays, uh, 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 second edition, third edition, it has come. Okay. There is no problem of mine. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I perceive, I think ki, there are some readers uh, who, who reads me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that marketing aspect is mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. a very complicated yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, uh, most of the times it is beyond uh, writers, you know, uh, writers' economics yeah. and writer. So, so there is a whole sociology of yeah. literature, yeah, you know, exactly. in which uh, uh, marketing is uh, part of it. Mm. Uh, and actually, I thank you to all of you people, those who are in the academics. I don't know whether uh, uh, the academician are def must be definitely they are uh, uh, giving instruction uh, or. Giving some sorts of you know idea to their uh, scholars. Mm -hmm. Many of the scholars, uh, starting from the university, you know, so Hyderabad uh, Central University, you know, uh, from uh, um, um, TIS, Tata Institute of Social Science, okay. and uh, from uh, uh, your Santi Niketan, uh -huh. and so many uh, uh, universities. Uh -huh. Professors are actually the academicians are uh, recommending uh, to you know have a PhD, MPhil on okay. my my right. my writing. So right. yeah. actually I thank to all the you know academicians. Yeah. Therefore I think uh, must be there is something uh, that is why the law and uh, yeah. academicians, uh, professors are recommending. Yeah, at the end of the day it is a collective work. Yes. At the end of the day it is a team work. Yeah, so, so I must extend my great thanks to yeah, all those uh, 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 academicians. That's what we believe in filmmaking. Yeah. That filmmaking is uh, collective art. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. so similarly you see a writer may be writing uh, in one room, mm -hmm. isolated uh, environment, but uh, when the book comes into uh, social sphere and it reaches to different parts also. so a lot of people participate yeah. and sometimes one doesn't actually know how many people have seen it and how many because that data is not recorded yeah. I'll give you one example uh, uh, mm, this uh, book uh, um, Juthan yeah. so when it was translated mm. okay so I happened to meet uh, the translator mm. in UK and uh, she was a little, you know, depressed that uh, should she translate any more, mm -hmm. yeah, who reads or something like mm -hmm. that. So I just, uh, she didn't know that okay. uh, we have introduced a chapter from it mm -hmm. and uh, already around 50,000 copies have been sold. Mm -hmm. And there are 2,50,000 students who are part of the 
uh, open learning system of Delhi University. Mm -hmm. So lakhs of people are actually reading, reading that. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, no yeah, place. yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. as we know, the universities now are multicultural, mm -hmm. multi-ethnic spaces. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, reading of such thing is not happening in isolation. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is happening as a part of the discourse. Yes. Yeah. So that is also the thing, you know, that in India we are very bad in documentation. Oh, yeah. We don't actually uh, document as yeah. uh, publishers or as uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. So we are more interested in making profit. Ah. How many yeah. books have been sold? Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. So I mean, there are you know. So uh, and that is where you know we in a way uh, fail to contribute uh, at the world level. Mm -hmm. And our university system mm -hmm. is still considered to be you know at a very low level. Mm -hmm. Say if we make a list of the list of the universities in the world, some. I know some uh, organizations say that uh, Indian universities even don't touch to the 15, 15, 5, 500 rank. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. So in, in it also it doesn't mean that there is no intellectual protection in India. I mean, for example, Lalit writing in the last 30 years, uh, there is you know, a huge tremendous huge what is writing. Yeah. No, but there is no data of it. Ah. You know, and. And that data, if they exist, that has been suppressed. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you know, for example, data of uh, uh, physical torture, rape, violence, uh, domestic violence. Yeah. You know, this data is not there. No. You know, so in that sense, you know, so uh, we have all these uh, things. We have a very protective, you know, kind of thing. My going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So statistics, you all understand that it's the art of running a state through statistics. Yeah. And uh, that always, uh, you know, indulges into, you know, uh, practices which do not, which highlight something. Which uh, they uh, want, yes, and which yes. do not highlight something. And so, and that is why actually, I would uh, rather say, mm -hmm. if this, uh, you know, um, general untouchability, mm -hmm. uh, it is less dangerous mm -hmm. than the, you know, intellectual discrimination, because whatever you know has happened in this society. That is uh, mostly the intellectual discrimination. Mm. The people, those who have, uh, you are talking about the documentation. Mm. Therefore, the people, those who have documented the wrong thing, mm. documented the wrong thing, and uh, documentation itself is uh, intellectual discrimination. Some class of people are being discriminated, and some class are being you know, uh, highlighted. Mm. So. Documenting is most important thing. Mm -hmm. Documenting is most important thing. Mm -hmm. And our things have not been documented, no one else. Yeah. And right now also, mm -hmm. I have been looking at that there are so many people who have already been educated, earning money. Mm -hmm. Our class of people I am talking about, mm -hmm. the little people I am talking about, they are actually not interested for some documentation kind of or some support for documentation. And not only you know uh, some will be writing, but then there are so many support someone should actually write, read the thing. What if you have documented, I should write, uh, I should read at least what you have documented and mm -hmm. you should give me feedback. So these are the things which is not been happened. Mm -hmm. Therefore uh, uh, the our culture and tradition are actually not highlighted. Mm -hmm. I have written in many uh, places that uh, in our culture there are history, uh, uh, historical elements. Mm -hmm. And in history also, in history, whatever history has been written mm -hmm. in India, uh, there also our cultural elements are there. Mm -hmm. So history, I have written an essay, uh, history in culture and culture in history. Mm -hmm. Many of the, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, our cultural elements, uh, I, I mean, in our culture, there are historical elements, but that has actually not been, you know, properly uh, uh, documented mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, per properly analyzed, mm -hmm. you can say, mm -hmm. properly analyzed in the uh, historical point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why intellectual discrimination is most important. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are discriminating in a pen and paper, documenting, and yeah, this has been written in the so and so Quran, so mm -hmm. and so text. Yeah. So you should have to abide about yeah. not yeah. it. So mm -hmm. uh, another step of uh, uh, no, uh, this intellectual discrimination, I would like to just present. Mm -hmm. 
I have written so many books and among them uh, uh, one of the book is Cultural History of Tanjit on which uh, Saroj has done his PhD. Mm -hmm. See that is a voluminous book and uh, since I, 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 I belong to different you know uh, profession and therefore uh, it took me around 11 years mm -hmm. to produce this book mm -hmm. because totally this book is based on field studies. It is uh, basically it is written in Uriya. Yeah, yeah it is written in yet to be translated into English. Yeah, it, okay. yeah, it is yet to be translated okay. into English. Into English, English or, other or any other languages. Or any other right. languages. Therefore, uh, it took me around 11 years okay. for roaming around because that is the uh, first standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have, uh, I, there was no reference uh, in any library, therefore I have quoted uh, many uh, names of the persons who I have met. Okay. My reference are the your persons. So you mean that uh, you, you collected data in, in the form of photographs, in the form of uh, video or in the form of in what form? I mean, oh, yeah. I was going uh, to the people and ah. just uh, writing, uh, just uh, okay. with a, you know uh, your uh, uh, recorder, mm -hmm. with a recorder, and uh, just I was uh, preparing myself. Uh, okay. What are what are the uh, questions to be asked? Okay. And those questions were inside my mind. I was not disturbing them. Mm -hmm. So intense. So you had a very interesting method also, yeah, yeah, yeah. in which you actually visited the area. So it was more. Uh, more than writing, yeah. So it was uh, an act of uh, participation, an yes, act of investigation, investigation yeah. at the same time an act of liberation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yes. uh, your visit also brought you know light to you as mm -hmm. well as to the person who you visited. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. you know because uh, it, so so it had many things in yes. it. Many of the old people they have actually mm -hmm. have. Uh, uh, expressed their overwhelming you know, pleasure that uh, this kind of thing will be documented. Okay. Our things will be documented. Okay. We, are, are you going to write it in pen and paper? Okay. okay. Did, uh, will it be published in book form? And the doubt is, yeah. is it worthy of it? Yeah. Yes. Ah. So actually, I so think the, 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 the caste based idea. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, how they tell us that is it really going to be yeah, yeah. they define yeah. ontologically uh, what is worthy yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean uh, so from that perspective you see worthiness yeah okay so uh, I mean if they want to uh, release uh, their you know pressure of the body yeah. or bladder in uh, urine in the bladder yeah. that is a worthy act yeah. but one who cleans it is not in yeah, yeah. So that aspect of cleaning should not be documented. <laughs> documented. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah, interesting actually. And another thing uh -huh. is that the irony is that uh -huh. as Saroj uh, rightly told me, this is a uh, I, 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 I try to concise. There are a lot of elements, there are a lot of you know uh, uh, data with me which can be further written or you know documented in other uh, another book. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a new kind of book, as I understand, and other people they speak, so people like Saroj they speak. Mm -hmm. But many of the uh, upper caste uh, writers, uh, scholars have gone through this uh, book. Mm -hmm. No one has yet written a single word on ah, this particular right, right, right. They will, they will not so What I was yeah. talking about the intellectual discrimination. I, know, I, know, I, know. I mean, once someone is writing yeah. a word in this book, means he is admitting or he is giving uh, uh, an accept acknowledgement. Acknowledging. Yeah. Acknowledge. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. no yeah. one has uh, uh, intent. Oh. So, so I hope this is intentional. Yeah. And yeah. this is or intellectual or discrimination. Or, or, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. or in uh, uh, or we may say language and writing is a war mm. yeah it is a war, war. Yeah. 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 so we cannot expect our enemies mm. yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. to you know commemorate yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, I mean of course I mean um, we take it as if uh, literature or writing or speaking is something very natural for human beings, but we understand that it is a political act. Yes, it is a political act. Yeah, yeah. In fact, so, in fact, huh? in fact yes. In uh, uh, 
maybe to add to that, yeah. there is one uh, somewhere I had uh, heard it or maybe I had watched it some in either uh, maybe somewhere in Ramayana or something. Mm. Uh, punishment may have different ways of, you know. Oh, this is a kind of punishment also. So, yeah. so uh, yeah. I think uh, in, in relation to Ramayana and in uh, Rama's punishment to Lakshmana when Lakshmana had been uh, put in the you know, watchman's position when uh, Rama was yes. talking to Yama or someone mm -hmm. and then uh, when um, the Rishi came and then at that time Rama, uh, Lakshmana had to allow him in because that Rishi was very angry. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what was the punishment to be meted out to him? Mm -hmm. Hanuman comes and says that if that is the case, when I use, uh, Rama was saying that if you allow anybody then you will be given death punishment. So Hanuman uh, comes and tells that, uh, no, no, you did not give him that punishment because disowning someone or not recognizing someone is equal to death. <laughs> so here, uh, this reminds me, uh, curiously, very curiously, I am taking a very, you know, uh, many Brahminical example and I am taking example from a Brahminical text uh. and using it in, uh, in, uh, in this context. Uh. But I think this tactic uh -huh. This way of disowning yeah, yeah. is a very much political act. It is political. As you like to say. Because if you disown someone and uh -huh. de recognize someone, it is as good as killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one another way, very subtle way of killing. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what true. Uh, uh, very ironical way. Very interesting actually. actually you know, yeah. I mean, because actually uh, one interesting thing I would like to present here uh -huh. to my audience uh, and uh, you both of both professors. Uh, Dom community, Ghana community and Hari community. Uh -huh. These are the three untouchable community uh -huh. in Odisha. Uh -huh. In Western Odisha. Uh -huh. yeah. They used to, you know, uh, beat the drum. Mm -hmm. I mean they are the music uh, music Musicians. musician community. Okay. They used to, uh, they have their own you know, instruments mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, used to drum mm -hmm. with different kind of rhythms mm -hmm. and that is the part of their tradition, mm -hmm. that is the part of their culture. Mm -hmm. So when the people, they gradually become educated, mm -hmm. it was given to the this deprived community that uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, beating this drum mm -hmm. is a kind of heinous work, so you should leave it. Mm -hmm. So, once in the initial period, the young people were uh, going to the houses of this, uh, the same, uh, yeah, of the same old caste fellow, mm -hmm. and they were destroying the, uh, this instrument. musical instrument. Okay. During that period, mm -hmm. because they were given an understanding in dreaming uh, this uh, drumming, this uh, the beating this drum mm -hmm. is a heinous work. It is untouchable work. Mm -hmm. there, there is no liberation with this kind of you know instrument. Actually, uh, actually, uh, this actually mm -hmm. there is a slight uh, maybe if I can add uh, drum beating that as you see in North India mm -hmm. or in Maharashtra mm -hmm. or maybe in South India is far different from what it is found in Western Odisha. Not even in uh, Eastern Odisha. Eastern Odisha is also drum beating yeah. is a different world. Yeah. But most of the drum beaters in uh, North India also are untouchable. Yeah, 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 I know, I know yeah. that. Yeah. But the drum beating, uh, you know, drum beating in different different parts have, uh, uh, when as I have, because I was in uh, Hyderabad for some time and then I have lived here in right, North right, India. Right, right. I have seen this, this thing closely. Mm -hmm. So here, actually, drum beating actually uh, is, uh, is consists of two or two, maximum three musical instruments. No. One is the dhol, that, uh -huh. uh, that is from the double right. side, right. right, two sides, and another is uh, one uh, plated kind of thing. Uh -huh. These are the two instruments. And But in case of Western Odisha, uh, uh -huh. and which has some similarity with some part of Bihar, where right. Chau dance, uh -huh. Chau and Western Odisha uh, drum beating, are two different, uh, two uh, sorry, rather similar things, and which is quite an elaborate affair. Okay. Okay. How? 
because in case of western which are this music that is drum beating they they pejoratively call it drum beating but actually it should consist of elaborate music oh, it's more um, is that a narrative it, it, so the first first uh, first thing is that, that means the first uh, instrument that you can say is it is sahanai sahanai mohuri, that, is, mohuri. Uh -huh. that is called mohuri you know because it is played by mo that is mouth okay. that is mohuri okay uh, uh -huh. so it is a it, it is a piped musical instrument mm. uh, which is more like Sahnai, what Bismillah Khan popularized. But, but, okay. but this is Sahnai. There is there is more difference. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, case yeah. of Sahnai, you you have only single, 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 single one. one. But here you have brass too yeah. also. Four parts. Ah, four parts. Yes, there are this five string, then there are another, then another, then then. then. It's far more complex. Just simple ordinary Sahnai. Mm. This is one. This is more. Mm. And secondly, there is two side thing. There is that dhol. Mm. Then third is one side that uses your lisan. Mm. Mm. And lisan. Lisan will will have again you know, considering a dhol maybe maybe uh, slightly I will go back to dhol. In case of dhol, what happens? On one side there is, it is shared with this cow hide. Mm -hmm. Another side it is uh, uh, put with uh, goat hide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the cow hide skin. Yes, skin. Yes, yes. Uh, cow hide uh, skin. Mm -hmm. So in the from the cow hide thing it has to be written with a stick. Mm -hmm. uh, and the from the goat hide side it has to be played with. Fingers. Okay. So it produces. It doesn't produce the ordinary dhol with two hands. Okay. It is one side stick, another side this is hand. Mm -hmm. So finger. So it produces almost minimum. I think uh, 15 to 20 sounds. Okay. It can individually. Mm -hmm. This is first, and he has actually done yeah. it, it elaborately. Okay. Uh, and then second, second which is talk about this all in yes, uh, in that history, book. history book. Okay. The cultural history book. Then in the second musical instrument, that is Nisan, that is, and this is buffalo hide. Mm -hmm. uh, it is covered with buffalo hide. This is pot, and that pot is it's not wooden. It is rather it is made up of uh, iron, yeah. iron, yeah. metal, yeah. iron, and it is uh, it is put with that buffalo hide. And in that there is a very elaborate way of uh, making the layers, mm -hmm. so that it will have a very far more you know resonating kind of sound. Mm -hmm. And that is that's how it is known as also Dunduhi, mm -hmm. and which resonates and goes back to Ravana's time and yeah, Dunduhi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that it is played with two uh, uh, plastic uh, maybe uh, leather uh, uh, you know, sticks. Yeah. So it is played with that. So Dunduhi, this is mm -hmm. this is third musical instrument. And the fourth one is Tinkiri, mm -hmm. which is you know that uh, it is the pot made up of the kind of bamboo thing product. And then it is shredded with it is with that that again uh, goat skin. Mm. So that has a very uh, what you say in, in terms of scales, mm. you, you will have lighter scale. Mm. You know? mm. It will not have that you know, resonating and uh, cross kind of sound. Mm. It will have very lighter one. So mm. tim kiri. Mm. And then there is junka. Mm. So junka will have these uh, tamarind things. Okay. So all these together. Uh -huh. All this will be here with these five element, five musical instruments together, they make out an elaborate arrangement for music. Yeah, what, what is the name of this entire so, so, so. This is called this is the Baja, Gona Baja. Uh -huh. There has not been given any, any name okay. to it because pejoratively they have been using Gona Baja. Uh -huh. But they are they are so essential to all the rituals of Western Odisha. Okay. You know, okay. In, in front of no in front of, if there is Durga Puja. If there is no Kana Raja, then there will not be any Dukha Puja. Okay. If there is this Bharat... And the Dalits do it. No. Dalits do it. Yeah. Kana, Kana, so during Durga Puja, they no, do no, it? No, no, no. Not no. Dukha Puja. No. Uh. Any of the festivals. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, thank you, Saroj. He had described the you know, magic, the, the instrument, how it is being composed. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. And so, uh, what I have written in that book is that, Everything uh, what Saroj has elaborately told ki, that has been documented. Mm -hmm. But what I need to say ki, during that period, what he elaborated the beautiful music, the people, the upper caste people, they, uh, they, they, they just uh, made a rumor that this is the heinous identity. Uh, they, see, okay. this is the music, basically, yeah. this is music. This is the yeah. music. Yeah. But, but they, they actually, you know, delegitimize. Yeah, they would say that huh? they, are, that. they are they are friendly domes. Ha, huh, domes. They yeah. just in a yeah. club that I don't know. This, this is their old uh, 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 so, 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 yeah. so, so What happened? Mm -hmm. Actually, when I was going moving through the people, mm -hmm. I could see the 
identity of the people in that bazaar. Mm. Identity of the people. Right. And whenever I have asked many people, they relates this bazaar with you no know, uh, Ravan. Okay. Ravan. Mm. So the the origin of Baja, whenever I am asking anybody, a old people, they are saying that this is the Ravana's Baja. Mm. Ravana's Baja. Ravana is treated as you know Asura mm. and other people. So what happened during that period, those who were beating this drum, mm. the community people are also dividing them. <laughs> they were not associating them. The okay. so-called uh, the so-called you know, educated. Uh. The people like you, me, they were just uh, I mean alienating them. Uh. So I saw the thing and I elaborately uh, wrote uh, the ba- uh, about the baja, mm. about the composition, and you will be astonished. Mm. Uh, you are talking more and more about the performance. Mm. Yeah. You are talking more and more about the performance. I, I also hundred percent agree with you. Fact, you can, you can. I, I just, I mean, just I believe you. But in the community, mm. in Ghana community or in the Dom community, when there is a marriage, mm. usually this baja is very popular for any kind of event. In all the rituals, all the rituals in the in the community, mm. particularly in marriage. Particularly in death ceremony, mm. particularly in anybody's you know birthday celebration, and mm. for any other person, uh, any other person, and worshiping of their own duty. Mm. So, the interesting thing is that mm. actually marriage is being done for five days mm. in this community. Okay, and in the process of marriage, different kind of activities go on. Mm. Different kind of activities go on. So, the these people uh, they beat in such a you know, manner that for each and every activity there is separate kind of thing. Uh, every no, occasion has separate thing, not occasion for every activity. Yes. For example, marriage is your occasion, and there are thirty. 58 I mean uh, activity so okay. 58 kind of uh, I mean uh, rhythm is there okay. so once the uh, uh, I mean the marriage is uh, going on here and some activity going on here then definitely people away from 1 kilometer or 2 kilometer he or she can recognize that this activity is going mm-hmm. on right now <laughs> so on the so other way this, this communicates this okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is most important. It means that uh, one needs to actually revisit it and understand the model of communication. Huh. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. another thing is yeah, that, yeah. and another thing is that yeah. it was it was it was totally you know used uh, as a mobile or or, or as a as a as a as a medium of communication also. Uh-huh. If someone uh, is died. So there was no communication to invite their uh, own people. Mm-hmm. So what they were doing, ki, uh, what Saroj was uh, talking about uh, the Nissan, someone goes to the top of the house and he beats in a particular rhythm. Mm-hmm. And the community people, they recognize that someone has died. Okay. Someone That's has died. Communication. And therefore, there is no need to go to many different villages. Uh, there is no need to. If someone hears this particular rhythm, mm-hmm. then he immediately lost to uh, that yeah. particular place to witness the death yeah. I mean, the, the like the party 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 period. Uh, so that is the what I mean to say. Ki, that is the means of the communication. Mm-hmm. That was the means of the communication, and different kind of activities is being uh, 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 recognized by different kind of rhythms. So during my course of you know research, I could find such tremendous things. So that's that a full language. A full language. Full language. Yeah. So that made of sound. Yeah. But that's what everything. You can you can give the examples of maybe that hmm. uh, the marriage, the death, and whatever the details hmm. are there, they are having different kind of rhythm. For example, what he told in the novel uh, Niyali Mali. Mm-hmm. Niyali Mali actually dance in a particular rhythm. Mm-hmm. Choti Budi particularly dance in a particular rhythm. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the deity is also connected with this music. Mm-hmm. The musical rhythm. 
सो आई थॉट कि दिस इज ए ट्रमेंडस वन एंड दिस हैज नॉट बीन टॉट इन एनी यूनिवर्सिटी और एनी कॉलेज और फ्रॉम एनी गुरु दिस पर्टिकुलर रिदिन हैज बीन डेवलप्ड बाय दिस कम्युनिटी एंड द the way he narrated the structure of the you know instruments that has been built up by themselves only the community people only yeah. so definitely this has got long history and mm. this has been perceived by this has been part of research yeah from the yes, ancient research yeah, from the ancient that their culture is a functional thing exactly yeah, 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 it is yeah. not just an ornamental uh-huh. thing yeah it's not ornamental, it's not ornamental. No. but at the same time the functional thing mm. has all the properties of ornament okay. yeah. you know yeah. and aesthetics ah, yes. so uh, aesthetics uh, in uh, the uh, dalit culture in history of dalit culture as i learned it from you emerges out of the processes of making yeah okay yeah. so making and then using creates another space yeah. you know maintaining so maintaining uh, sometimes you know uh, develops a very interesting kind of historical aesthetics you know but that is something valuable and in it society which is based on discrimination it has to be disowned to be said you know otherwise it will speak something larger than the shastras which they have yeah you know so ultimately as the a uh, classical text okay whether of music of uh, performance or of religion or of rituals or culture etc so this is you know entirely political area of the cultural sphere so culture is a political sphere in which you know significance of x y or z is really contesting yeah you know and of course you know uh it generates power mm-hmm. okay and it not only generates power but it also generates the legitimization of who should rule you know that is that yeah. is also there yeah and so 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 the legitimization my legitimization uh, from that uh, after the publication of the book mm-hmm. thanks to my community people mm-hmm. at least the educated those who were actually <clears throat> I mean, uh, this only mm. this music. They started. Yeah, they have. They have internalized the thing. Yeah, really, yeah, this yeah. baja has got that importance. Mm. And the people, those who have destroyed, they are they are repenting. Okay. And now this has become a you know uh, it, it it has taken a very beautiful moment okay. now. Right. Okay. In each and every occasion, people are inviting. and the way earlier they were drinking <coughs> beating drums and uh, you not know, using this music for different purpose now they have been using so i think also that is also a, 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 a success uh, of the writing of book. this uh, book right at the well, uh, <laughs> i heard about your father you told me uh, he used to sing and uh, and that is where uh, you started with the word poet yeah. and uh, the poet uh, actually then became a role model for you and you started writing are there such episodes in your life with your mother as well my mother um, is a is a is a running poetry it was a running poetry for me पोएट्रीटली someone is actually crying with a song sad song mm-hmm. and also whenever my sisters were going okay uh, to their you know uh, in laws house uh-huh. during that period also my mother used to cry uh-huh. uh, with, with with beautiful sad songs uh-huh. so uh, she doesn't know how to talk but then uh, whenever there is a sorrow she starts uh, uh, i mean singing Uh-huh. with sorrow but there is an emotional moment emotional moment yeah. yeah. 
automatically outgoing so, uh, yeah, so our uh, poetical uh, ornamental language yeah. uh -huh. so that has been part of the actually uh -huh. colloquial things uh -huh. there in, in western and that definitely that, that has motivated me like anything to write poetry uh -huh. and in many of my poetry that has been documented and for each and every activity i mean uh, going to the forest collecting this mowa and uh, i mean the char and other things and uh, also uh, cultivating in the land if many things has uh, our uh, activity has been reflected in many of my poetry mm -hmm. and my mother i can say represents the whole you know uh, our community people mm -hmm. because all the uh, community ladies uh, were equally doing uh, such kind of things what my mother was doing mm -hmm. since my mother was close to me and closely i was observing therefore i could able to you know uh, document uh, mm -hmm. activity her actions her uh, you know words and uh, many things similar so she things, was she a poet of different kind was she herself a poet of different kind uh, yeah definitely for me <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, she did uh, not write it down yeah, yeah. So one, thing, like one thing for example when we enter modernity print media yeah. then we have a uh, thing called poet and uh, novelist mm -hmm. and other thing you know mm -hmm. in a separate manner mm -hmm. because of the marketing and sociology of literature yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you look at let us say pre modern people yeah. so called yes, pre modern yes, people yes. Are like our mother mm -hmm. so i mean uh, why could she not be a poet in the strict sense of yes. print media literature yeah, okay so if we look at her life mm -hmm. then we find that uh, she actually was much more creative yeah. Definitely, you know, and that has the creativity has not been actually documented. Documented. It has not been written down. Only thing, you know, yeah, right. and uh, uh, and that that is where you know somewhere uh, print culture uh, in a way uh, supports patriarchy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because ultimately you know things uh, uh, take uh, yes. shape by the larger social systems. and political and economic systems mm -hmm. that is why you see a number of women which have who have come in the printing media in last 100 years mm -hmm. that number is small but if you look at that number that number also comes from majorly from upper caste yeah yes, you know, again that is also you know yeah, one area yeah, right. so lower caste women okay and uh, their uh, work mm -hmm. and their work uh, uh, was very much close to uh nature yeah. nature not in uh, the sense of uh, uh, romantic poetry mm -hmm. but nature in the sense collecting wood from the yeah. earth mm -hmm. collecting flowers from the earth yeah. yeah. using them as medicines yeah. okay or you know uh, weaving certain things and then uh, uh, making uh, some kind of you know uh, uh, pictures sketches on wall etc yeah. yeah. during different customs uh, drawing manna or other kinds of these things so th their life was you know full of number of creative activities every day every you know day, every so day. if we collect them put together yeah. so that can become really a very exactly. great anthology exactly. yeah, anthology sure. of lot of things yes. uh, yeah that's true and Absolutely. that task i think that task has remained incomplete uh, yeah. that project hasn't started you know yes that and, uh, and uh, yeah. uh, just a supplementary to really have uh, thanks uh, to you uh, that uh, really you have uh, uh, you know catch uh, the most important part of this uh, mm. discussion mm -hmm. uh, just uh, i will supplement you our people were just uh, uh, beating the drums music mm -hmm. and uh, we actually somehow uh, try to you know express about the structure of the music and the content of the music and the uh, many other parts mm -hmm. another input Along with the you know music, no, our, begin from the get to get. Yeah, along with the music, our community do have get to get or gaha. Mm -hmm. So the gaha uh, is the you know you know a, a, a instant point, mm -hmm. instant point. Supposing a marriage ceremony is going on, mm -hmm. they will be specially invited, mm -hmm. and since there are different kind of you know rhythms. Which is being drawn through this music uh, uh, team. Mm -hmm. Someone has to sing. Mm -hmm. So the some of the people 
they are you know well first with instant you know composing the song and start singing by just mm -hmm. looking to a lady or looking to an environment looking to this food uh, ma, 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 food ma, food or anything mm -hmm. they can make a you know poetry out of it and they immediately uh, sing mm -hmm. so they are called the gitkuria or ga mm -hmm. Throughout the night, throughout the night, the people will be dancing. Throughout the night, he will be composing his uh, instant new, song and new, 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 songs. new, new songs. Okay. Instant in songs to impromptu uh, new songs, yeah. new composition, new okay. composition, and he will be just singing uh -huh. and and just uh, basing on that song, the people will be That's living it. in a different, uh, different rhythms. Okay. So what I would uh, 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 just supplement you that. That uh, the, the the poetry which is instantly being sprouted or you know instantly comes uh, from the mouth of that Geet Kudia mm -hmm. that is not yet been documented mm -hmm. and really he is yeah, the real yeah, they they they, they, they evaporate uh, yeah. people, people enjoy the moment and then forget uh -huh. so <laughs> <laughs> it means they have such a wonderful creative capacity yeah, yeah. yeah. that they don't mind even uh -huh. uh, you know. But 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 the time has changed. Uh, yeah, time has changed, and uh, we now understand that most of the things that we don't document, you know, they ultimately take us to a very backward. Uh, you know. It's like the impact now. Now that uh, the times have changed, and now that that five-day marriage ceremony is reduced to two days or uh -huh. one day ceremony. Where no more that five elaborate rituals or five days of dancing and singing is going on. Mm -hmm. So when these with these geet kudiyas don't have the opportunity to go and explore, uh, you know. But this so community, this community is there. No, no, it's a living tradition. Yeah, it's a living tradition. They are part of this Ganda people. Yeah, oh, yeah. That both males and females. Yeah. They will not be one male or one. Yeah, yeah. They, they will be male and female. Okay. And, and they could be, they could be have this verbal duel. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. You know, imp impromptu. Yeah. So right. if the male is saying something, you know, describing the okay. female, right. the females can hit back. You know, in, in the same tone, yeah, in the same erotic, semi-erotic, sometimes oh, okay. devotional, sometimes right, right, right. mostly it is semi-erotic. Uh -huh. uh, and sometimes, uh, uh, particularly in case of that, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Dalke, mm -hmm. there is Dalke dance one is there, mm -hmm. and that one occasion also. So, in case of Dalke dance and Dalke songs, mm -hmm. it is mostly erotic. Okay. Uh, so, it's mm -hmm. celebration of life in different. Okay. <coughs> yeah. yeah. So once uh, the so-called upper caste people, they were talking about that uh, the Dalit do not have their own culture, their own identity. So now you can just analyze, uh, you can think of okay, with this, you know, uh, rich uh, music, rich, you know, tradition, rich uh, this uh, uh, literature, Gitpuria kind of uh, spontaneous poets. How can you think uh, that uh, there is no no cultural identity or you know uh, 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 they don't have the, the culture mm -hmm. so i hope uh, you must understand ki particularly dalit community has a great tradition of culture mm -hmm. rich culture and uh, uh, once uh, uh, the great uh, sociologist uh, william You have quoted it. Yeah, I, 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 I have quoted it. Mm -hmm. It's missing out. Okay, we will just continue. Uh, 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 he is told that there is hardly a culture without music. Uh -huh. So definitely, this community do have their own music and this music has been created by them, developed by them with various kind of you know, rhythms and uh, instrument composition and different kind of thing so mm -hmm. that shows the creativity creativity of this uh, you know, community and a long tradition mm -hmm. so definitely this uh, this community do have a, a cultural identity and great culture only thing is that this has not been documented as you rightly said is since the thing which has not been documented that must be only because of to suppress that may be the conspiracy mm, and to suppress that is uh, that may be the politics to you know suppress uh, 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 the identity of this community mm -hmm. so with uh, with uh, Vasudev Sunani's works what I have observed and 
Because as we know the literature, we we start with Panthe movement, the Panthe movement, mm. and uh, Marathi poems, resistance, and then or hitting out, you know, mm. angry uh, voices. So where you know there is this assertion, mm -hmm. the resistance and the assertion. But as we come to Vasudev Sunani, that point of assertion and resistance slowly and steadily. Mm -hmm. is going towards more of you know celebration of the identity mm -hmm. and celebration of culture right, right. rather than simply hitting out right, you know? right, right. so that's where maybe uh, we can yeah, say it opens so up more space it, it opens up space and then yeah. maybe we can say with people like that uh, Surani probably that is literally measuring out yeah so because for any movement or for any identity, if we can make it that chronological step, although it is not very chronological, if there is this identity formation, then assertion, and then another you know, celebration, mm -hmm. and if we have that those yeah, distinct yeah. stages, yeah. although they may not be very clear uh, in sometimes, sometimes all these three so stages. So there is always non linearity, non linearity, yeah. I mean, and you know, it, 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 can't, can't, it can't be. It, it, yes. That's a construction. Chronology is more a so, construction. Exactly. Yeah. So even if, if even if we have those things in, in non-linear thing, but there are these stages. So in this uh, formulation, I think by by this time we have this celebration stage mm -hmm. rather than only the assertion stage because yeah. only assertion will not work. Okay, okay, okay. That's, so, that's important. So that is the you know that yeah. is the, the I think most uh, yeah. fundamental shift in right. the right. literature. And celebration. Uh, uh, of uh, that identity of, of and identity that culture, that, that life, which actually developed or evolved over hundreds of years. Yes, okay. yes. So yes. it's uh, not just uh, the celebra today's celebration thing. of uh, uh, Happy New Year. Uh -huh. kind of it's thing. not like yeah, that. but it's more you know uh -huh. uh, years and seasons uh -huh. and all kinds uh -huh. of things together. Uh -huh. And very interesting aspect about it is that it is not a destructive. Creativity. Yes, it's okay. not destructive. It's yeah, not just so, only hitting out. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, not just an I'm oppressed, oppressed, oppressed. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the aspect. And number two is, for example, there is no uh, uh, manufacturing of, of weapons. Huh. Huh. Rather, yes. there is uh, manufacturing of creative ideas. Ideas. And human as a resource, mm -hmm. and how human can actually create culture, mm -hmm. and that culture is. Uh, is 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 for the happiness of all happiness, all, yes. all people yes. and it doesn't have the idea of violence mm -hmm. it doesn't have the idea of killing people mm -hmm. in mass mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that kind of creativity mm -hmm. actually needs to be recognized, recognized. particularly during these times yes. when uh, creativity also means mm -hmm. how to invent better weapons better. Yes. you know yes. so a creativity mm -hmm. that uh, actually uh, made many people happy mm -hmm. and it really generated a kind of tradition that incorporated a bank of history and culture mm -hmm. where everybody could deposit the creativity, creativity. you know so mm -hmm. so there is you know and anybody could have an account in account, yes. without having a particular ID, ID. <laughs> so in that sense you know it's a, a very interesting kind of banking uh, or interesting kind of transaction transaction you know and and that transaction uh, uh, which is without bureaucracy or without managers you know, or without organizers and when when we do in this situation for all oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so quite interesting and uh, uh, this entire conversation actually has really created a space uh, we had a place here we were here we have the lights and we have the room, but we did not have the space. The space arrived and got created only in our conversation. So human beings, when they meet, they create space. And that space is empty space. Empty in the sense that it leads to more and more exploration. So if it is too much filled, then it doesn't lead to ah. more exploration. Yeah. And I hope that we will continue with this uh, conversation and uh, many more episodes will occur out of it. They will come out of it. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 uh,
Vasudev Ji and Saroj. Uh, it was really nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah.